Hey everybody, it's your friend ECW fan and it's time for the monthly movies. Hey guys, now we're getting to the action, sci-fi, stuff like that. Anyhow, one day at the Goodwill, I stopped in, it was early, and it was just a short-term trip. I was like, I didn't mean to go, and I ran into CJ. CJ was out there, and he was doing some shopping, looking around, and uh, me and him roll into each other, and we walk in and look around. So, I found two Blu-rays with Liam Neeson. I find the A-Team which I may have showed off before, and I find Taken. So both Liam Neeson hits, and this is the extended cut of Taken, so this is kind of cool. I may have showed these off, and uh, I don't think I have. I think it was in a other volume that wasn't a monthly pickups. Now moving on, there was some nice movies I picked up, and one of these is one that I've been looking for. It's a sci-fi horror type film. It's called Annihilation with Natalie Portman. And it was on this three disc set for I think three seventy five at Walmart. I I'm not really interested in the arrival and I don't know why Tomb Raider's on here because it's one of those films that you really you're sitting there looking at and thinking it has nothing to do with aliens or anything like that. It's not really a sci fi film. Uh, but Annihilation is one I've been wanting to look watch. And uh, it's got an interesting premise. It's an interesting horror film. They said there's some spot, spots in that with some creatures that is spooky as hell. I picked up Prisoners of Ghostland at a pawn shop. And I love, the, I love the back of this. It says, if you're a fan of bold and outrageous, get on board and hold the F on. Yeah, that's the Nick Cage's directed DVD classics. And uh, Prisoners of Ghostland. I, I gotta watch this. It's, it seems interesting, you know. It seems interesting. Uh, it's got uh, Nicolas Cage and and somebody from the, uh, the Rob Zombie films. I can't forget his name. Now, here's one I've been wanting to get. And uh, I thought I had it in my collection, but I didn't. It is a King Kong. It was the 70s King Kong with Jeff Bridges and... Jessica Lange. I have all the, uh, I have the original 33 King Kong. I have the, I think I have the 2005 one. I just sit there and look at it and like, and then I have the uh, latest ones. So I decided to get this 70s classic because I like it really a lot. And there's actually two covers. There's that one and there's the back cover. And I actually like the front cover best. I like the front cover because it's got a nice homage cover to the past. Kong smashing airplanes. I like that. I had a pawn shop. I picked up the Mutant Chronicles, which I didn't even know Thomas Jane and Ron Perlman had done this with John Malkovich. I have never heard of the Mutant Chronicles. This is one of those weird, I, I picked it up and was like, this is a movie? Really? These three guys did a movie together? And I know that Perlman and Jane had starred in Dirty Laundry, the the uh, little fan film they did of The Punisher. And I think it was Jane's idea to try to pitch. It was like a pitch to... H. It was like trying to get a cable network to pick up a Punisher TV series. And uh, it would have done a lot better than what the Netflix Punisher was. The Netflix Punisher was just a joke. I mean... I'm sorry. If you like the Netflix Punisher, I don't know. It it was just too it was just too overdone. It was like people wanted to see the next. I mean, John Berth Murnau, Berthnow, or how you pronounce him, is perfect as Frank Castle. I mean, he's got the look, he's got the intensity, and you're you're actually you know in one of those episodes, I was like, holy crap, he's he is Frank Castle. Well, you don't let him be Frank Castle. You basically you send him on pitch errands like. Go, Frank Frank goes and plays with Microchip's family for so many episodes. I'm like, God. I was like, son of a bee, what is wrong with this damn series? I said, I said, what are you doing? 
and it, I don't know if Marvel, you know, Marvel's got the rights. I don't know if they'll do the Punisher series or not. People want them to, but there's a whole controversy with the Punisher symbol, and it's like I don't know if we'll get that or not. I don't know if we'll get that or not. It's just, it's just a joke. People want a good Punisher series. They want him to they be like, like him reading off Punisher War Journal, Punisher War Journal, and him going in and killing mobsters. They want a, a type of war zone with a good story involved. They, I mean, I don't want Craven Ultra Violence like War Zone. I just want a good Punisher series. Nothing like the joke that you've done. I mean, <laughs> that's my end of my rant. I picked up 2010 at a, uh, why did I pick this up? Oh, yeah, the flea market with that guy with the Wings series. And I've got 2001 Space Odyssey, I believe. No, I don't. I don't have that one. He had it. But the disc was in bad shape, and I wouldn't take a shot on it. So I decided to get 2010, the year we made contact, which was a sequel. i got to get the Punisher out of my mind. Just the anger. How can you screw up the Punisher? The series has enough depth to write itself. <laughs> you could adapt a bunch of the Chuck Dixon stuff and go from there. <laughs> but I don't think we'll see it. It's like Hellblazer. Why can't we get a good Hellblazer series? <laughs> well, at a pawn shop, I picked up a five-film collection of Wesley Snipes. And uh, this had Demolition Man and U.S. Marshals, which I wanted. These two were the ones I really wanted. And uh, I was happy. I, I'll watch Passenger 57 and Murder at 1600 and Boiling Point at some point. Uh, Dennis Hopper's in Boiling Point, so that sounds pretty interesting. All the discs are there. It's in perfect shape, so it looks like a pretty good film. At that same Goodwill where I picked up um, Love America style, I picked up The Deer Hunter. The Deer Hunter. Oh, yeah. That's a nice one. This was a classic for the director, for the fact that the director who did The Deer Hunter that won five Oscars got such power in Hollywood because you're a director you just come off writing and directing one of the biggest hit films that just won five Oscars you could just you could just you have a basically a blank check and this is what a studio did this director would go on to do uh, Heaven's Gate and Heaven's Gate is one of the most terrible movies that was ever made it's 1980 and it lasted like three and a half to four hours well he shot so much footage, the film was actually six to seven hours before the studio cut it down. And even then, it's just so long. Uh, he shot thousands of hours of bit footage. Uh, it's just crazy. And the film, you know, it, it ruined the studio. And after this, the, the whole director having all this power pretty much eased out of the Hollywood system due to that. Um... At that pawn shop that I picked up 75 cent movies, this was the last one, and it's Sean Connery and Outland, which I believe someone said this is almost like a wide Earp, uh, Marshall Dillon type story, which is set in space with a cop like Sean Connery at, as in on a space station. So it's really it's like a sci-fi western, from what they're saying. Now this one I had to pay the dollar for. Because it had two big Stallone, it had two big action films. It had Universal Soldier, which I have on Blu-ray, and it had Lockup with Stallone, and I needed Lockup. So this gave, you know, I picked up two nice Stallone films during the month: Demolition Man and Lockup. And I'm still working my way through these films, you know, to get his good action films. I need Cliffhanger. I think I think I need one more. And uh, I may have showed this off in an earlier volume, but I believe this came along in August. And uh, this one was one of those that I picked up, and this was a nice one. It is Monster Squad. The Monster Squad. And this is a nice little series, a uh, nice little movie. Not a series, movie. And uh, it's a sad, I always see that scene with Frankenstein and that little girl and Little girl reminds me of my niece. Don't go Frankenstein. Oh, I was like, oh man. Just chalk. Just get your right here. 
so this one came from the uh a goodwill with the uh love american style on the other one it is rumble into brox and the corruptor i picked this one up and uh i've been wanting rumble in the bronx because this is one of jackie chan's one of my favorite ones the, the the scene with the building collapsing on him is probably one of the coolest scenes and jackie chan you know become known for doing his own stunts he would you know showed him diving off buildings and he i think he actually hurt his foot in this movie he broke his ankle and he actually continued doing the stunts he just had to wear a fake medical boot that tells you the toughness that jackie chan has to actually keep doing his own stunts and the last one I picked up at a Goodwill was Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And uh, every time I look at this movie, I always think about Weird Al's. This means something. <laughs> yes, this means something. <laughs> it's a nice little sci-fi feel. And finally, one of the last... Oh, no, I'm not done yet with the action. I picked up Harrison Ford in The Fugitive. And this is the first appearance of Sam Gerard in the films he his character would go on to u.s marshals but in the fugitive he is hunting richard campbell played by uh harrison ford and i remember watching this so many times and i actually watched this with my dad and his friends one time and uh we all sat around watching it and uh we had rented it back when movie stores was because <laughs> we went to a movie the place and we, was, we come back to the motel and we was like what do we want to rent and we all was like Let's rent the, the Fugitive. So we all sit down and sit there and watch The Fugitive. It's a nice little memory, you know. I picked up The Chronicles of Narnia, The Voyage of the Down Trader, Treader. And uh, they, I think they did three of these Chronicles of Narnia films. But time passed so quick that the child actors actually grew up. That they actually had to basically you know it's hard to keep child actors into a certain role and unless you're filming back to back to back like um the lord of the rings is you're not going to be able to do it and that's a big investment filming that big and that's a big money investment to do that because you don't know if a film's going to be a hit or not now at the same flea market where i picked up wings in the 2010 i picked up this series the first season of stargate sg1 and I love Star. I love the movie Stargate with uh, Kurt Russell and I think it was James Spader. I believe. I believe it was who played in it. Can't remember. But yeah, Kurt Russell's one of his biggest '90s hits was Stargate. So he made a TV series with MacGyver, Richard Dean Anderson. But he's MacGyver. Yeah, I mean, there's another guy playing MacGyver, but he's not MacGyver. This is MacGyver. So uh, MacGyver. Basically, is one of the guys in charge of the Stargate, and uh, they made so many shows after this. They made so many spinoffs: Stargate Universe, Stargate Atlantis, Stargate Every Which Way But Loose, Stargate Next Door. I mean, it was like it, I, you would turn on Sci-Fi Network, and there was a new Stargate series. And Stargate is due for a relaunch. I think we're gonna, probably going to see a new series soon, and they'll relaunch the whole entire thing. And Sci-Fi bring their money maker back because that was their money maker that was one of their money makers now one of the last movies i picked up and this was a collection set and this was at a thrift shop and this thrift shop has been gold for me because i found that damien omen set there he had a 25 cent sale at one time back in july so when in august i was like clicking i was like i walked in there i was like man i can't find them like you know i walk in there so many times during the month and finally I clicked on this 37 film set, six DVDs of Sherlock Holmes collection. This is the definitive collection. This has all the movies of Sherlock Holmes from the 1930s and 40s, I think even up to the 50s. And uh, that's a lot of movies. That's, <laughs> And I didn't even pay any or close to that. So finally, I finally find something. So. This little thrift shop has really clicked for me. I found some good stuff. I found those 25 cent movies back in July. I found the Damien Omen set, which was, I don't I don't think I'll ever top that horror set. But speaking of horror, let's get to the, the horror films. And Eddie, the big one's coming, baby, at the end. The big one. I'm calling it, it's like Fred Sanford, the big one. It's coming, Elizabeth. It's coming. 
I picked up at a pawn shop. I picked up Hereditary. And I actually started to watch this on, I think, Tubi. And uh, I got busy and I left. And I didn't get to finish watching it. But the child actress in this was creepy as hell. I don't know what it is about this child actress, but she was creepy. And I was like, I don't know if it was going to pick up or not. I got like 25 minutes in and I had to leave. So I was like, well, I don't know. I need to get back to that. I picked up The Ruins. I have ne I like this cover. I've never seen this unrated The Ruins. And uh, unspeakable. Unstoppable. Unrated. Intense. Disturbing. Cut wrench. Looks interesting. Don't know if it's any good or not. Now here's one that I've never known about. And I've, I've heard about some of Michael Caine's movies, but I never know he played in a movie called Jack and Hyde with Cheryl Ladd. Felt this in the pawn shop. I said, like, I've never seen this movie. I've never seen this before. I said, I best pick this up because it's stuff like this you don't really, you don't really see that, you know, it could be something valuable. I mean, it could be something Eddie will know. <laughs> he knows about movies more than me, so... Oh, you know, it could be something. Now, that would have been that would have been perfect. That would have been my hits right there. That would have been it. But I picked up two Blu-rays at Cheap's Reels, and I got these off trade. I was actually able to trade for these with store credit. I picked up Return of the Living Dead on Blu-ray, and this is the '80s classic, the punk rock. Return of the Living Dead on Blu-ray. And I really love this. I love this this cover, man. Look at that. And the uh, actor Glue Glue uh, Galaga, or I think it's how his name is was pronounced. This guy right here. He passed away in I think a couple days before I picked this up. And there, there it is. There's there it is in Blu-ray. I was like, man, that's nice. Somebody just turned this in. So the guy said, I knew that wasn't going to last long. He said, I knew that wasn't going to last long. Somebody was going to pick that up. But then it was this next find on Blu-ray that really, I just did a, I've got to get it. I know I'm going to be, this, I'm going to be stunned because I've heard this film is so, this film has a reputation that countries banned it. Uh, the country it was shot in actually thought these actors had died. He thought it was real. And he was going to try to direct her for murder. And he had to appear and tell them, hey, no, it's a movie. You know, it's a fake. Well, I can't show. I'm going to have to cover. I'm going to have to cover most of it. It is Cannibal Holocaust. Cannibal Holocaust. So I'm trying to cover it so I don't, you know. So nothing happens to me on YouTube. But yeah. It's Cannibal Holocaust. This is a movie you could just sit and watch with the entire family. Just uh, just sit down and watch some Cannibal Holocaust. And this comes with a book and a uh, it's on Blu-ray. It comes with a special DVD set. It comes with a CD. It comes with a uh, CD. Uh, and this one it goes that the one that goes all the way. I again I can't show any of this, but it's got the book Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah. And it's just, it's just, it's just wild, man, that he would make a movie like this. But uh, I, I plan to watch it soon. Uh, I couldn't watch it because my niece was up. There's no way, you know, I was going to watch this with no way around because this would have really gave anybody nightmares. I'm stock, I'm shocked I picked it up. But I was like, you know, I need to get this. I need to get this movie. It looks unique. It looks insane. It could be the most insane movie I've ever picked up. And I'm pretty sure that Eddie Billy, I can't believe, I'm pretty sure he's thinking to himself, man, I can't believe you would pick something up. But yeah, it, this is this is one of those, this is just insane to think about. But yeah, the disc, I've, I, I ain't got to play the music yet from it. I was tempted to, but yeah. But in all, pretty nice month, and especially with that Cannibal Holocaust that I picked up. I can't wait to watch it. I'll watch it one day, see if, see what it's like. <laughs> Eddie's probably telling me, tell me what you think. We'll see. <laughs> but yeah, Return of the Living Dead and Cannibal Holocaust pretty much topped off the month. I want to thank you for watching August Ass Kicking Month and uh, for movies. 
and we'll see what September holds because I'm gonna have to slack down for Christmas. You know, I have to plan it out what I'm gonna get for Christmas and the holidays. Thanks for watching.